First of all, if you want to get yourself a really cool retro case for your retro pie, head on over to cat5.tv slash pie. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, first of all, with my brand new Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, the first thing I want to do is I want to put some heat sinks on it. Now, these are available on Amazon. You can grab heat sinks. They probably, now in my case, they came with the, uh, the kit that I bought from Canna Kit. So, cat5.tv slash pie, you buy the kit, it comes with heat sinks. So, I need to put on the CPU heat sink just to keep that nice and cool. That's going to dissipate the, the heat even better than the, uh, the improved uh, cooling uh, kind of metal cover that's on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And then there's one for um, this little chip over here. I don't know if that's the, the math coprocessor. To the, I'm not sure what that is. But it's cute. And this will keep it cool. Because it does get hot. Real simple. There's stickers. You don't need any frosting or anything like that. <laughs> no expertise. <laughs> yeah, just push down on it a little bit, give it a little bit of pressure. And now we are ready to install it in our new retro case. <laughs> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is just the box. <laughs> they went all out and I, I would pay somebody, I would ask them, how can I send you money just to buy that box? And inside the box is is really what it's all about, folks. And we talk about mini game systems, like the mini, like the SNES mini. And look at this, a Nintendo entertainment system miniaturized. It's got USB and Ethernet there. It's got HDMI port on the back, the SD card. And there, incidentally, on the bottom here, where there normally was the GPIO or the connection, is a little storage case they even got that detail to put your SD cards in. It's got two USB ports on the front and a working power button that operates just like the uh, original NES. Like it holds in. It's not like just uh, uh, a momentary switch. It stays in. It came with a fan as well, uh, a screwdriver, some screws, and just a quick little instruction set. We'll look at that if we need to. Okay, so we're going to actually put this together for you tonight. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started. Cool. I guess the fan is just going to offset or draw some of the heat out of there. And there's some screws to mount that to the case. So what I like about this, if you notice the USB ports on the front and everything, and they, it actually has circuitry. Like it's not your typical Raspberry Pi case that you just stick the Pi in and then plug everything into the Pi. It has these um, connectors that plug into the Pi, and then it has its own headers um, that make it so that you're not restricted to the form factor of the Pi itself. So with my Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, I'm just going to uh, insert that with the uh, HDMI at the back, but uh, first we'll connect in Ethernet, and that will make live the Ethernet port on the front of the what's called a Nest Pi case. Plus, So this is the next generation of the Nest Pi case. Uh, and this one is slightly larger than the original with um, better cooling and a little bit more airflow and, and certainly less cramped. And I think it looks more legitimately like a real Nintendo Entertainment System than the original case. So it just kind of goes in there. Just line up the headers at the back because it is going to you're going to plug your HDMI directly into the Pi. And then we've just got a little pack of screws. Um, most of those, six of those are for the case itself because this is a, a case that we're going to assemble and, and leave assembled. It's not something you're going to be swapping your board in and out of. Um, but then there are two screws to actually mount the Raspberry Pi board to this case. Now, keep in mind, this is compatible with uh, B model boards. So you're looking at the Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 3 model B+. Plus. Um, so you can, you can mount other system boards in here as well, and presumably uh, future ready as, as well, as long as the form factor on the new Raspberry Pis stay the same. So with these two screws, it's just going to mount that in. See, and I have to make interesting, Sasha, <laughs> putting in two screws. So, you know. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Ah, oh, thanks. Tiny, tiny screws. Yeah. Look at how tiny they are. They're tinier than a pie. They're, everything on the pie is so cute. Oh, and this so is small. just the cutest. I know. It's nice and snug. It feels real snug. There you go. 
Now, this header here is uh, going to give you the fan. Uh, so we just plug that in. Make sure you put it in the right way. The uh, the pins are on the outside of the Raspberry Pi, and that enables the header on the top there and gives it power for the fan, uh, as well as um, whatever other power is needed. Now, there's no designator here which way the fan is blowing. Uh, I know from experience that usually the... Uh, the sticker side is where it's going to be blowing out of. So I'm going to put that down so that we're drawing the heat out of the case. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be drawing air into it. We want to push the air out of it. And it just snaps in there. And then there are three screws that, uh, that just hold the fan in place so it's not going to fall out. There's some good TV right here, folks. <laughs> Riveting. Look at that. Look at the way I turned the screw. And, and note the screwdriver was even included. So I didn't even have to buy, buy or find a tiny enough screwdriver. It's, it's included. So now you've got an extra screwdriver for... That's actually very considerate. Yeah, you know, until you end up with, with 300 of these screwdrivers, you're, you're happy that they included it. Yeah. Now you can also fix glasses. I feel like that's yeah. the same size. Oh, I'm thinking that this is going to be a perfect size for changing motors in my drone. Oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Nice, simple installation, folks. Uh, I think if you give yourself 10 minutes time, now we're not going to take that much time tonight because I, I have the power to accelerate the video a little bit, um, but 10 minutes time is all you need, and then you're going to be up and running with your retro pie. So I'm not sure which way to, uh, to put this cable onto the, uh, this is the fan header. I'm not sure which way it goes, and there's no, like, one way... You could put it on either way. I don't see anything in the instructions about the fan either. It's only about the case and the installation of the Pi. So uh, I could plug it in with the positive on the left. And you can always change the polarity, and that's going to change the direction of the fan. Um, but actually, the, the red, I'm just looking, and there is a, uh, a marking that says the positive is on the right my right. So that should be the correct way to, to put that fan in there. Okay, so now the next step is just to close it up, and I'm just I'm making sure that the cable there is not going to... Uh, there's quite a bit of slack on that cable. I don't want it to obstruct the fan. I don't want it to get into the fan. I guess I could put a twist tie on that or something like that, but um, I think it looks like it's going to stay out of the way. It's not going to nudge its way over to the fan, so shouldn't be a problem. And that should just snap right together. There we go. Doesn't that look awesome? It looks oh, awesome. my goodness. I can't wait to show this to my family because we grew up with that. Look at the SD card slot on the side, too. All right, so now we've got those six screws we've got to put in. This is where, you know, this is, this is way too much <laughs> for you. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What was your first retro gaming system, Sasha, growing up? I remember? played, well, I played Atari games, and then I had, uh, I think I skipped right to Super Nintendo. Really? To be honest. So you went from Atari 2600 to a Super Nintendo? Yeah. I had an Atari 2600, and then when the NES came out, so the Atari 2600 was like out when I was born, mm -hmm. um, and then I got the Nintendo Entertainment System when it came out. So there it is, folks. So this really is a throwback for me. I'm so proud and excited about this. Just this case, that's going to sit under our TV in full sight. It's got HDMI on the back. You'll notice that the header for the power has been offset using their built-in header, and it looks astonishing it is sharp it is so cool the ultimate retro pie retro pie case and there it is are we ready to fire this up yes we are all right it's, it feels good uh you know people are gonna ask like is it flimsy and cheap and no it feels like substantial it yeah. feels real it's solid you know? it's... it is solid and you feel that button yeah it's click 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 yeah the reset oh, button is, is uh, momentary, so it's yeah. just like the original. Everything and, about it. Is and I guess, uh, you know, folks are wondering about the uh, SD card slot over here. So there it is. I've already put in our RetroPie SD slot uh, card, and it just it goes in and out nice and easy. It's not going to fall out. There you go. There we go. Okay, so let's fire it up, Sash. 
All right. Here we go. Now, I can plug in power because, remember, it has a power port, uh, power button on the front. It's not going to turn on until I hit that button. I'm going to go HDMI output. So it supports HDMI, but it does have access to the, um, the AV port as well. Okay. So if you want, you can use one of these cables, right, and plug that in here. And then you've got RCA output for an old style TV. Right. Or if you're real retro. If you want to go completely retro. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And then I mentioned a little bit earlier that I'm using an Xbox controller. So I do need to use an Xbox receiver because it's not Bluetooth. If we wanted to, we could use Sony PlayStation 3 remotes, which are Bluetooth. And right. then I would not need a receiver. And I could play it just like that. So no, no extra wires coming out of the front. I think that would be cool. So I'm going to get myself some PlayStation controllers. But it does have two USB ports on the front, too, and then another two under here. So, But you see the ones there? Yeah. You can plug those. Uh, you can get USB retro NES controllers that look exactly like the originals, but they're USB, and you can plug those no in as well. No way. That is That's the next awesome. step. That's if you're completely obsessed with retro. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my receiver here, and I'm just going to push the power button. There it goes. 